Sandra Campos. She sits on the board of Big Lots and is a former CEO of DBF. Sandra, great to have you with us. Um, Hi, Melissa. You make, for me. you make the point, and, and we've all seen this, you know, throughout the holiday season, that there were a lot of discounts. Um, there was price erosion. How can retailers, you know, go back on that in 2023 when the consumer is feeling even more strapped than they did at the end of last year? It's the question of the year, and I think 2023 is definitely something that we're reflecting on the slowdown and the discretionary demand from the consumer. So one part is absolutely agility in terms of inventory. So that's the first part is matching demand that's out there with the inventory, the appropriate level of reserves within your own open device. So from a retail standpoint, you know, having the right inventory, matching it so that the retailers can stay nimble and having the merchandise that the customers want at the right time. You know, another aspect is technology, AI, that's really helping in terms of pricing and making sure that the, the price points are what the consumer is expecting and also competitive across the board. Mm -hmm. Those are definitely at the top of the list. Um, in terms of price points and pricing, uh, are you a believer in the sort of barbell approach to retail that it's the low end and the high end that are going to do well ultimately in this sort of environment and, and not the middle? Well, the luxury consumer is definitely staying the course. It's sustaining and they're still spending. At the same time, we do have trade down. So the middle is actually, it is trading down and that consumer is being able to go and find value price points, value products. And whether that has to do with the, the off-price retailers, TJ Maxx and big value chains, or if it's just trading down and even markets customers more, uh, more contemporary price point. But the luxury consumer is definitely staying intact. What I thought was interesting is we heard from uh, Burberry, for instance, uh, citing China as, you know, saying that the reopening is, is really helping. I'm wondering how you think about China factoring and whether it be the return of the Chinese consumer and to traveling and therefore buying more luxury goods and or, you know, the wave of COVID that, that is expected in China because of the increased travel, et cetera, and potential supply chain issues, which really hurt the retailers, you know, a year plus ago. Right. Well, supply chain issues are definitely becoming less so. You know, retailers have opted to also look at other manufacturing options. You know, the, the recession actually hit manufacturers because, you know, that has been down across the board. And, and we saw that earlier. But when you look at the Chinese consumer overall and their ability to travel and the luxury demand that they have, that's definitely going to help a lot of the U.S. businesses and certainly luxury brands because, um, you know, they've been a big consumer out there. So that demand has continued to be high and they have a younger demographic and that younger demographic is spending as well. Yeah. Um, one thing in the notes really stood out to me, and that is, you know, it's an interesting way of thinking about all the people who migrated to different parts of the country during the pandemic and how that's boosting certain kinds of retailers. And you mentioned boot barn and tractor supply specifically. <laughs> Does that last or was that a one time thing? You know, you go buy your boots or <laughs> whatever, you know, hats from tractor supply and, and you're done with that. Well, tractor supply is a different type of retailer, but one is certain retailers are definitely benefiting from a pandemic induced migration to the rural areas and, and tractor supply and boot barn I mentioned. Tractor supply is really, you know, they have a much more resilient customer and a need because they are dealing with farmers. They're dealing with a lot of people who actually have to go to that store to be able to pick up their feed for their animals and all the different aspects of, of what they do to be able to manage their farm and what they need. So it is a need based as well. They also have an incredible loyalty program and they, they've done a great job with merchandising and their online as well. Um, I would say Boot Barn, it still remains to be seen. A lot of that being trend, whether that be, believe it or not, Yellowstone as a series, whether that had to be deriving a lot of the trend and a lot of the demand will remain to be seen in terms of how they continue. But there has been a trend towards more rural type of retailers being able to to have a bigger better footprint you know smaller stores less costly from an operational standpoint and that's a plus sandra thank you good to see you sandra campos